Big seven o'clock. Would you all join me in a bunch of fly? So I like to get ready here. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Lynn, would you call the roll, please? Mr. Kroger? Mr. Sullivan? Here. Mr. Hutchinson? Here. Mrs. Vandewater? Here. Mrs. Lesnia? Mr. Tupper? Here. Mr. Here. 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 All right. I'd like to approve the minutes uh, for our September 20th meeting. I'll make that motion. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. I will abstain. Yeah. Okay. Passes. Uh, citizens' comments. Anything? Anyone wishing to address the board? Lisa. Yes, Lisa, if you come up right here and give us your name and your address, please. Name and address. All right, Lisa Jarmus. This is weird. I'm like, all right, I live at 415 Idlewood, right in Village Green. So I would like to address the speeding issues, the ongoing speeding issues, and I know that they're an issue everywhere. Where I live and my neighbors here, we are in a strip of 15 miles an hour on Idlewood Boulevard. It's well, not- Already at 15? Yes, there's five signs posted, loud and clear. It's not for a school zone, but I'm guessing it's probably because of the school and the heavy traffic and the kids walking and all that stuff. So there's five um, signs posted. Actually, yesterday I found out I had my Google Maps or my Apple Maps on, I'm driving home because I wanted to see if the GPS would change when I got closer to that area, all of Idlewood on my Apple GPS shows 15 miles an hour, which is strange. So I have dropped off letters, emails, all that stuff, and I'm sure you're aware. We've gotten the I've been making too. my voice heard, yeah, so here I am. So it's frustrating because there's lots of kids that live there riding their bikes. Some parents won't let their kids walk to school because of the heavy traffic. I videotaped cars flying by with my uh, security camera. I went out and bought a radar gun. I counted in three mornings I was out there for less than two and a half hours. The first time I was out there longest. In less than two and a half hours in three mornings, 65 cars going more than double. I'm not even counting 10 miles an hour over, I'm not even going, not even counting 25, not even counting 29 miles an hour. 30 to 41 miles an hour in a 15 mile an hour zone. That's dangerous. So I would like to get more patrol. We talked about that before, speeding signs, the electronic signs, the temporary ones, whatever. So saw patrol the first afternoon I talked to you back August 2nd. Nothing since, they're busy, they don't wanna be there, you don't wanna pay them to be there, whatever the reason is. Trying to get a stop sign in, I asked twice about an addendum because you said that was easy, just need an addendum. I emailed twice asking what exactly that entails, never heard back. So did some research, dropped off what I thought was good enough for an addendum on August, September 5th or something. Sorry, I have notes. I wasn't thinking I was going to be talking up here first. <laughs> um, so... September 5th, dropped off what I thought was an official addendum to get that ball yeah. rolling, still haven't heard back. When I first spoke with you, you said it was an easy task, that was your jurisdiction or whatever, um, about two weeks, haven't heard anything, don't know if what I dropped off was an official addendum because I wasn't given any instruction when I asked. So yeah, it's well, the, it's frustrating. <laughs> the stop sign is a, it's, a, it's different than speed limits, so speed mm -hmm. limits, we have to go to the state, and the state determines whether the speed limit should change or not. Okay. Stop signs can't be used for speed control, but we do have the ability to put stop signs up in high-risk areas. Right. So there's a distinction between the two of them. Right. I'm not, and you mentioned lowering the speed limit in the area. I don't think that's necessary because if it's 30 and they can't even go 15 or we're, 25. We're just having that exact conversation. It, lowering the speed limit through the neighborhood's not going to work, especially when it's already listed at 15. How much lower can you go? So my thought is a stop sign at the new road to the school, the bus road there, will help cars slow down because when they're coming down Idlewood, heading towards Daywood, 
they're only slowing down where I'm getting them on radar is because there's a stop sign in two houses. So when they're coming the other direction, they're literally gunning it and flooring it. And by the time they're passing the 15 mile an hour, they're already going over 30. So who knows how far they're going or how fast they're going a mile, like a block up or whatever. And granted, it's an issue everywhere, but I think the stop sign would help slow traffic down in there. There's about 15 kids that live in a 900 foot stretch of one sign posted to the opposite side coming both ways. There's 900 feet of, there's four signs there and then one on Daywood. But there's like 15 kids, like 16 and under, that live right there. So they're going to the park, plus all the other kids that are <laughs> going to the park and riding the bikes and all that stuff. So I've had two cars in the last month. I'm pulling out of my driveway, getting going, and I have cars flying around me and honking at me because I'm going the speed limit. My neighbors across the street, they have five little kids. She wrote a letter, I brought a letter for her. Five little kids, I'm backing out of my driveway slowly, getting going, this car comes out of nowhere, lays on the horn, I'm literally two houses down, I'm just getting going. Laying on the horn, speeds around me, I'm coming home on Friday after work. Two houses this way, I'm starting from the stop sign, getting ready to pull in, he speeds around me, honks the horn and goes flying by me. Like, that's a problem. They're crossing over the other side of the road to get around somebody that's going to speed limit or just going, like I'm coming from a stop sign. I'm not gonna be going 30, I'm going, you know, like get over it, so yeah. Where is it you wanna put a stop sign? Where? So I can picture it. Um, you know, it used to be the walking path for Reynolds. It's now a bus route. They oh. put a, a bus path or a bus road in there, so it's for buses coming and going there. So it's kind of like there'll be like six houses in between and that's right past, it's two houses past where a 15 mile an hour sign is going up towards 48 and then coming the other way, it'll be a couple houses before the sign that is facing coming the opposite direction. Okay. So if you're heading on Idlewood toward mm -hmm. Village Boulevard North, wouldn't you want to put one right at, at Delwood since that's- There the is. There's a sign that- There's, there's a four way stop sign, sign and okay. they blow through so that too. So in between <laughs> that stop sign and the sign at Daywood, mm -hmm. you want to put another stop sign in between that little area. Mm -hmm. So I'm assuming like just past Delwood is where you're talking that the bus route is? The bus road? Yeah, yeah. so it's six, seven, how many houses are there? Six? Only so only about three so three we're not using speed control. We're using There's six houses. Yeah. 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 But, as long as speed um, control the is in the, the other cross road, 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 road. Oh, what am I saying? I'm saying. Oh, I'm saying Daywood. It's Deerwood. I'm sorry. We were talking the same thing. Okay. It, that seems like it's just to me a little like too short of a distance to throw another stop sign in there. Okay. I'm thinking we need to figure out an option to try to get people to just reduce their speed. That's been the challenge. What's the law on speed bumps? Talk to our highway superintendent. It's, it's a, not a thing we want to deal with. What's that? We explain that again. I, yeah, I didn't. I don't, yeah, know, I don't understand that. Speed bumps. Okay. Yes. The law on speed bumps? So to install a speed bump, I'm going to step on Doug's toes here for a minute. You have to drill holes into our road, and when you drill holes in the road, you have a place where water can get into your roads. And then come the winter, that water in the roads pops our pavement, ruins our roads. So seasonally, you could do speed bumps, but if we're worried about a school zone, you know, those, those we're not plowing snow in the summer when we can put down the speed bumps. Yeah. I see other speed bumps in central New York. You do, you do. How and do they deal with it? The same way. They, you, you nail those things to the road so that they don't move, people don't take them and then they deal with this, the, the road damage. And, and I caution everybody about stop signs. There's two things that happen with stop signs. You get speeders who run stop signs and your kids get a false sense of security. I'm at a stop sign, I can cross safely, cars don't stop. Well, and you're gonna do that in a school zone. They'll stop for kids. speed bump. And they'll, they'll slow down, sure, <laughs> sure. Yeah, I just fear some kids can get hurt before it's actually taken yeah. care of. Yep. It's, been ongoing and getting and worse and worse and worse and worse. Well, your speed is always 100% enforced. You're saying even with, there's different levels of speed bumps. So you're saying even a little bit, there's different heights, I'm sure they go. You're sure. the engineer. Sure. 
So yeah, even there's smaller, speed bumps, there's speed even bumps. a minor level speed bump will cause an issue with, with water in the winter. Because you have to nail it to the road. It doesn't matter what size speed bump, you have to nail it to the road, you have to drill into it no matter the size of the speed bump. So you're fracturing the road. We have fracture roads all over this. Yeah, this I know what was, was hey, was well, we're, you know, we're ago. trying, you know, yeah, that's not I something know. we want to encourage. It seems like you're just saying no and forget it. Absolutely not. No, absolutely, absolutely not. not. Well, what's the option then on speed bump? Well, what we just said, we so don't want to. It sounds like you say no, forget. So what if you cut out like bumps, little I, I would um, say speed bumps are not, a, of, not an option. Not an option. So it's not. Or one end. For speed bumps, yes. Yeah. Right. We're still damaging the road, right? Well, so. the road's already cracked. Right. But, <laughs> <laughs> they just paved it seven years ago, and it's already oh, starting oh, to fall oh, apart. Oh, and they kidding me? paved over a storm drain and all that. And I called to say, hey. <laughs> and I was like, oh, sure. I don't know. Doug. <laughs> so, <laughs> Would a rumble strip uh, compromise the uh, rumble road? Strip would, the rumble strip would be even worse. Uh -huh. It collects the water in the low spots. I wondered. Uh, I wondered. And I would caution the board that everything she's describing is horrible. Um, however, they were all talking about coming from a stop, from a stop, from a stop. So just explore all options because if she's coming from a stop down and having these problems, I don't, I'm, the, the, the concern I would have about adding another stop is you do get the people that either floor it from stop sign to stop sign, or you start getting the people that drift through them. And that's the most dangerous thing in the world that can happen for anybody. Right. Um, going through well, them. So I think we need to look at a, uh, a bigger broadcast of what we can do about it. And a lot of it is going to come down to an, an enforcement type issue. Right. I agree. Well, not all of it's coming from a stop because like the cars are starting wherever, even if they're at a street light and they're gunning it, but it's past, it's right past the school road, mm -hmm. you know, and I'm walking my dogs, my friends are walking, you know, our kids and, you know, mm -hmm. so it's not necessarily coming from a stop. It's just slow because they're going to, you're going to be stopped no matter where you are, but you're still going 40, over 40 miles an hour in a 15. <laughs> that's, Mm. That's a lot. Absolutely. I live on Ben Tree Lane. I've been there 28 years. Okay, I've raised my two daughters. And on Hillary Boulevard South, which I'll talk to Brandon, the stop sign, they don't pay attention to it. Yeah, I know exactly right. where you're talking about. I, mean, I was riding my bike a few years ago. The cop was looking at her TV screen. I go, you just didn't see that. He goes, you know what? It's it. He just drove right through it. <laughs> it I, I think they do it on um, right where Soft Wind Circle is when you go mm -hmm. up like past yeah. Fulton Savings Bank. And yeah, well, that's Crane. I look up like yep. that tree. That one, they just signs. blow through that too. They might as well take it out, it doesn't do any good. Yeah. Did you say you have letters that you want to drop off? Oh yeah, I brought two letters from neighbors. Others are going to email or drop off or whatever. So I don't know if you want me to sleep that here. Sure. Thank you. Thank you. So Thank first, you. And to remind the board that we do have those, we have two, Mobile units on order. Yep. Yes. Just waiting for them to come in. As soon yep. as they're in, we'll start. I'll Where are they board. Gonna We're gonna. I'm gonna get with the board, and they'll be. They're, they're mobile, so we can actually put them in different spots at different times. Yeah. Yeah. The ones that say what your speed is, right? Mm -hmm. Correct. They flash. You can set them up to flash, and and it also um, will actually record what. Is actually go transponding there. So okay. we can and it doesn't it show what the speed limit is? Correct. And then it'll show yours so it will reiterate, hey, it's 15. It's Correct. not 30, it's Correct. not 35, it's 15. And, it'll flat. and you are way over. Mm -hmm. And it records. I have a question on the speed limit. Mm -hmm. It's 25 on Crandon, where I live in Village Green, but it's 15 that you're talking about. Mm -hmm. How did the state come up with those two numbers? Any idea? I don't have an idea. I believe on well, the, Iowood. The 15 is because of the school zone. Oh, because it's near school. Correct. Correct. Whereas well, 25. What's the distance, the, the distance from school? Because but well, I'm near, more near McNamara, but I do. My kids went to Browns. Right. Well, there's no school on Crandon Terrace up at that section. There's no um, either. Well, the kids cut through there. I, mean, I realize that, like, but there's no. You know, the kids cut through yeah. almost everywhere, but there's sure. no. Pedestrian sure. access or okay. bus access to that road. Yeah. On on Idlewood now, there's actually two entrances yeah. 
to it. They have yeah. both the, the old existing one yeah. at the. What's the, the speed limit on Ben Tree Lane? There's no speed limit listed. I just I lived there 20 years. I, they go 30, 40 miles an hour in my little circle. On Ventry Lane, if it's in the in the if it's a town road in the town, it would be thirty. So it's five months thirty, and then Crandon is twenty-five. If Crandon is posted twenty-five, then right. that would be posted. That would be the speed limit. Speed limit twenty-five on Ventry. Right. Okay. Just thought I don't know speed limit listed on my road. So well, uh, you said that it records the speeds actually too. So that could be data we could pass on to yes. the sheriff's department and say this is how many Correct. Uh, all the stuff we have. Just many like she had done. Had done. Documentation of how many we'd be able to have an exact count of the exact same thing showing that look, we're getting a problem with and the sheriffs can target peak time right. when, there's, right. when there's most speed. Yep, and I filed complaints online on the traffic complaint with the sheriff's department and nothing. I've offered my driveway for them to sit at nothing. Yeah, yeah. Actually, that was the 9th question. I was going to have so I've just as an immediate response, what I will do first thing tomorrow morning is I'll request a hearing with the sheriff's department and I'll just as an immediate response, what I will do first thing tomorrow morning is request enhanced patrols again on Idlewood. And if, if you're a medalist, that I, I will give them your information. Oh, on, yeah. So they, they can, can sit my driveway. Yeah. yeah. So Neighbors are going to talk. I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> so the <laughs> patrol being um, on the Dr. County Sheriff's Department. Yes, because right. the Beeville Police doesn't want it, right? Right. That's right. The, not, the it's village. not in the village. It's a village ball. Okay. They could be called on backup. Oh, they could? Because I've, yeah. I've never seen the Beeville cop. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Really, so they they police police for a, respond to a situation. Yeah. Yeah. Emergency yeah. response, they can be called as well. Oh. Uh, sir, should I go? I just wanted to send uh, Brian Morrison, I'm a neighbor of Lisa's, and I have to agree with everything she said. One of the issues is Idlewood is a through street. It goes from Village Boulevard north all the way to 48. And People come off from the stop sign that's in front of the school that's Deerwood, right? Yeah. yeah I, they, they treat it as, it might as well be a racing strip because you can, I can sit in my house and hear it. I can hear the acceleration of these cars. Some of them are louder than others. They're kids or whatever with their cars that make a ridiculous noise. I don't know. Anyway. Uh, it's it's unbelievable and it's not just kids either it's adults sometimes the adults are worse than than the kids and uh, the acceleration coming off from that stop sign to go down to wherever they're going on further on down idlewood so i think it is uh you know as much as i hate to say it speed bumps or something is probably the only thing that's going to get anything done because the the way society is today, nobody cares. Right. They're not disciplined enough to keep themselves. I mean, that's our neighborhood, and we want it safe. I don't expect uh, people to disrespect our neighborhood like they are. And there's other issues as well, but um, I just want to confirm everything that Lisa said, and that there are people here in this area that are concerned. Sure. Thank I, you. Here, and uh, I will say that uh, my neighborhood is suffering the same exact problem. It's the same issues that, that you're describing. And it's a through street that people use as a cut through. And it's it's a real problem. And it's, it's sad because I travel around this country. I've been in San Francisco and Los Angeles and traffic stopped so I could walk across the street. If you tried that here in this state, you'd be hit. I disagree. I see lots of people stopping in the village when people are crossing in front of the, the library all the time, even at lunch hour and peak times. They do stop for the kids crossing over. I see it all the time. I do. Yeah. Well, maybe that's because the village police pay attention, but we've got deputy sheriffs, you know, and yet we're not getting any attention. In the past, they have sat on Deerwood and watched people come to the stop sign or the stop sign going towards 48 and they have given tickets and that worked and i don't see why we can't do that again sure um, people need to be we can and we up a little bit yeah. and reminded that they are disobeying the law and that some kid is going to get killed and then they'll pay attention but we don't want to wait till somebody gets killed we want it taken care of now we've lived there 34 years 
and we're the fifth house from the stop sign. And by the time they reach our house, they are literally going 30, 40 miles an hour. And there's several cars in particular. I see them almost every day. And there's this one babe with a white BMW, and she is going. I have spoken to her. I yelled at her. As she goes by, she flips me the bird. Oh, um, it's totally ridiculous. That what is the fine for 30 miles over speed limit? Oh, it's, it's buku moving points, like, like eight or nine. I mean, it's school. a lot of money. You can't even, like, go to an attorney and get that you reduced. You don't understand how much money people have this time. They don't even care about a $500 bill. Per month. Well, it's points against your license that you yeah. can't get removed. Yeah. So if they're going 20 plus over, it's mm -hmm. a, a serious crime. Mm -hmm. So if they are going that and they get caught, mm -hmm. it will be a serious ticket that they'll have to deal with. And it's not easy to reduce that at all. So I need two people, one to be on the cell phone and one for to get the license plate and I'll do my radar and I'll we'll double team it because it's hard to get both because I can get the cars but I can't get license plate and I'm trying to make sure that I'm recording. <laughs> well I think we need to let the police do it so we'll work on <laughs> engaging them. Yes, I, I also I don't want to wait until someone gets hurt. Sure. I, I don't either and like I said we've been there 34 years and I've seen a lot of things but it has definitely gotten worse. The only speed bump won't work, stop sign won't work. The only thing that will work is enforcement, and we have them right here, yeah. pay their salary. I want to see them doing their job. Yeah. Speeding may not be their pri the priority number one, but it's important enough because there are so many kids, and they have the right to play in their neighborhood safely, and their parents have the right to expect that their children are going to be safe. That's why we pay taxes. And therefore, to my way of thinking, the only thing left to do is enforcement. They used to vandalize the school all the time. They were there till 2.30 in the morning, leaving beer bottles and all kinds of things. Then the deputy sheriff used to, now they make a round around the school. So that kind of activity has stopped completely. They drive around the school several times a night to see their headlights and the, the trash and the partying and all that on school grounds has stopped. But the children, it's a, it's a year round problem because when school is out, they still come over to the schoolyard to play. Parents, kids, dogs, babies, everyone uses the schoolyard to play which is, you know, that's fine, but they need to be safe. And we walk, and a lot of people walk their dogs. And, you know, it would be really terrible if someone lost their life on a road that is supposed to be, you know, 15 miles an hour, 20 miles an hour, and they're going 40 and 50. Thank you. Uh, as I said, I, I will speak with the sheriff uh, tomorrow, and I will, uh, I will make sure that there are enhanced patrols in that area, and I will impart to him the seriousness of this, how serious all of you are, um, the numbers that you have given me, the number of cars that we're seeing speeding. Uh, I assure you they'll take this seriously. And that's just a drop in the bucket. That's the sad part. <laughs> it really is. But what we'll, what we'll probably find is it's a... It's a, a group of frequent flyers, the same people over and over again. And if they get a couple of tickets over the course of the next few weeks, that should slow them down. It sounds like they've got a park over there 24-7. Mm -hmm. But there are peak times when, yeah. in the mornings especially, yeah. and then the evenings. Uh, they used to come the first day of school, they used to come to park on Deerwood and just be there ready. Sure. And ticket, 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 ticket. And we immediately slow the traffic down. And it would last for at least a few months. But they haven't come and patrolled that area very much at all. I don't see, I haven't seen the deputy sheriff's car. And, and what would you, you know, say is the, the peak times? Um, in the morning, 7 to 9. 7 to yeah. 9, yeah. 9 30 even. After um, school, like around 4, 3.30, 3.30, 3.30, 3.30, 3.30, 3.30, 3.30, 3.30, 3.30, 3.30, 3.30, 3.30, 3.30, 3.30, 3.30, 3.30, 3.30, 3.30,
Yeah. <coughs> Wait, do, you have, do you have any numbers on the speeding tickets that have been issued in Village Green? Yes, I do not. No idea if it's zero or five or time. Okay. That, that's not typically information that's that's the, the court system, not necessarily the supervisor. Uh, it's available through the court system or the. I would imagine so. It's all public knowledge. So, thank you for that information. I'll add that to my discussion with the uh, sheriffs tomorrow. And we'll see if we can get them out there for those peak times and start writing some tickets. Thank you. I also, uh, my name is Sabrina Tipton. I live on Seneca Street currently, uh, only for the last couple months. I have lived in Village Green for eight years prior to that. I do have a small son. He's seven years, well, almost seven years old. We'll tell him he's seven. Um, and he plays at that park very frequently. It's his favorite park. All of his friends in his childhood live in Village Green around that park. He's made a ton of friends there. Do you mean the school? Yes. Okay. Yes. So Reynolds? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And he plays there almost every day in the summer, um, even when school's not in session. And we've seen this firsthand. Him and I will ride our bikes there, and we see cars speeding. Cars don't see us when we're on our bicycles on the side of the road. Um, I've also seen people get a little bit of road rage when people are driving slower than them. So I'm really concerned because we have two schools right there. Um, and then we have houses and we have children playing. Um, we have you know, people walking their dogs. We have people who are elderly who may not move as fast. And if something were, you know, somebody were to come flying through, they might not be able to get out of the way quickly enough. Um, we just have some people who are very vulnerable that we need to protect and make sure that they're safe. Um, but through those eight years, I've seen it get worse. Um, so I moved there initially, I think, in 2014. And people were respecting the rules of the road a little bit more. Um, but until recently, it's just been complete disrespect for any of the traffic rules that are in place. Um, so I'm really hoping that we can get some more law enforcement presence there, um, specifically because we're seeing this probably increase and get worse. And I'm also worried about, um, you know, the safety of our kids that go to school there, not just my son, but his friends that go there every day. I'd expect that people would be the same way at his school. He goes to Van Buren, um, and that's a residential area too, um, where I also see people speeding through there quite a bit during school time. Well, thank you for that addition as well. Is there anyone else would like to address the board? Sorry, I didn't sign in, but there were a couple of things I wanted to note about the speed thing. And the Bose 1600 drive, uh, we're looking at a potential development one block away of several hundred homes. So my neighborhood will be impacted theoretically with some of the same issues. Uh, in my travels as well, uh, different cities, Washington, D.C. and Syracuse is employing speed humps rather than applied bumps. These are permanent pump roughly three feet uh, in width across the whole road. And you can just, I've seen them in series. So it's not just one hump. You have to have another one six to eight feet away so that there's a spread. Take my word for it. When I first ran across in DC, I know they work. You start looking for them the very first time. It's a hump. It's only about six to eight inches. So the snow bottles aren't effective. If the city of Syracuse can employ that, perhaps the town could consider it. Uh, the other thing I noted, and I've seen it over uh, by the Burn Dairy, over uh, off the of State Fair Boulevard, a private radar light sign attached to somebody's pole in their front yard. That it seems to be that they went out and purchased on their own and attached it to the light pole. And I see it, I yeah. work for it, yeah, yeah. I look for it. Because I have four different vehicles, and die was all a little bit different on each one, so I'd like to see exactly how accurate my car is, whether I'm two over, five over, three under. So I always look at those, and I'm referencing. So it, it, it works, it helps me out. Uh, there's been private ones. Uh, there's a permanent one over in Camillus by the school on Route 5. This is a permanent uh, radar information school zone and a poster speed um, and it's difficult for everybody because i don't know how many folks have noticed new york state in their uh, construction zones they have come up with part 
radar vehicles that will record your license plate and automatically ticket you for in a speed zone. So it's not just, it's, it's everywhere. You can't slow down in a speed zone. But uh, you know, maybe the town might want to have a consideration about permanent lighted signs, uh, radar guns with potential ticketing. Uh, in the future, uh, there are larger municipalities that do have that. Thank you. Thanks, Andy. Phoenix also has uh, mm -hmm. what he's talking about, the permanent radar sign, your speed is. Mm -hmm. I think it's a, a good informational thing that will maybe trigger a few great matter cells, I don't know. And one of the millions, as you go down 173 and you're going downhill, it shows your speed and you know, nine times out of ten, it's more than the speed limit because you're coming down hills, but it makes you slow down. And there's an elementary school at the bottom of the hill. Great, thank you. Good information. All right. Anyone else wishing to address the board? All right. We will move on to our first agenda item of the evening. Thank you all. Thanks all for coming and all for your input. Uh, item uh, number one is to approve vouchers for uh, through 10 for 23. Uh, vouchers 231175 through 231137, the amount of $128,959.03. I make a motion we approve those vouchers. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? The motion carries. Uh, oh, we are going to, uh, I'm going to ask for a motion to recess from our meeting going to public hearing. For comments on uh, second. All in favor? Aye. Thank you. Uh, we are now in public hearing. We're going to read reading of the legal notice. Is a public hearing to extend a solar moratorium. Excuse me, folks. If you want to talk, could you go outside so we can continue with our meeting? Thank you. This is local law I 2023. Uh, to extend the, for an additional three months moratorium on solar farms within the town of Van Buren. Uh, anyone wishing to speak in favor of this proposed law? Yes, sir. I would like to speak in favor of it, and I commend you for, for doing this. You're looking at a problem down in the future, what it's gonna, what it's gonna do. Uh, not just today, because somebody says, well, I have some land, I want to put a solar one on it. Uh, and I appreciate that. Thank you. We appreciate your comment. I, I just want to throw out there that I think it's important that we do that, because this is, the, solar kind of is the future, but we need to also control it. I mean, we, we need to make sure that it's going to fit into our community the way we want it to fit in. I'm not even sure it's the future. Well, <laughs> it, it, you're right. It may not be. <laughs> All right. Anyone else wishing to speak in favor of this law? Anyone wishing to speak in opposition? All right. Hearing none, uh, we're going to ask for a motion to close public hearing and go back to the regular session. Second. All in favor? Aye. All right, that motion carries. Uh, Stacey? You can't enact this tonight because right. we don't have the jam out referral back. So I'll just make a couple comments. Um, yes. You've been I had uh, the forefront of this. <laughs> um, I was on the land use committee that was um, consisted about seven folks, um, a couple from the planning board, a couple from our community, um, and a couple um, town councilors with us re um, reviewing the existing solar, um, again, it's something that's very new to the town. We aren't really sure what we're doing or what it's going to look like in the future, as Tom said. So we want to be sure that we're protecting the town the best we can. Um, with those meetings that we have, this group went through the existing um, law, tweaked it, amended it, added things, took out things that were irrelevant, and I think we've come up with really good substantial um, addi additions to the law. So I haven't had an opportunity to sit with our town attorney. We were gonna do that today. Um, she got called away on a family matter. We're gonna try to meet next week. 
and then she'll put our discussions and our additions and suggestions into the current local law, give it to the board for review, and then we'll discuss it and vote on it. Um, hopefully, it won't take us three months to go through that, but we want to make sure that this is a very thoughtful and thorough process so we don't have to go through and review it again and change it again. So I appreciate everyone's patience. Um, I know that when we first um, voted on the moratorium, I don't think anyone thought we'd need to extend it because I think it was a year. So unfortunately, um, we do have to extend it, but um, I'm hoping it's just three months and we'll get this circulated to the board for review and then we can actually vote on it. So thank you for your patience and Nadine will get us to where we need to be. So thank you for the update. Yep. All right, well, item number three, budget transfers and modifications. This is uh, simply authorizing uh, the comptroller to uh, move monies to their appropriate areas so we can uh, pay some items. Uh, the, the highway truck, uh, the, the dump truck, plow truck that we approved last session, uh, that is, we just need to move that money into the appropriate account for her to, mm -hmm. to uh, affect that purchase, and the same with the copier leases that we're buying out. So if I could get a motion for those transfers. Move. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Um, no opposed, but um, Rick, was something circulated about those that I missed? Yeah, we voted on it last time. At the last time. Okay, I wasn't here last yeah. time. Okay. That, that motion carries. Thank you. And if you'd like more detail, I'll be happy to. Yeah. All right, thank you. Before. I appreciate that. Uh, item number five, uh, we're going to introduce a local law, uh, J 2023, relating to the ability of the town of Van Buren to override the limit uh, and the amount of real property taxes that may be levied by the town. This is, uh, in essence, a 2% tax cap as a state uh, has mandated for us. This is not uh, an indicator that we are going to exceed the tax cap. We have no intention of exceeding the tax cap. In fact, we likely will not exceed the tax cap. This is simply allowing the board to override should it be necessary. Uh, the penalties for, over, for going over the tax cap are severe from the state, and this gives us flexibility. So again, this is not to override, this is just gives us the authorization to do so should it become necessary. Uh, and we're going to call for a uh, public hearing. Mm -hmm. uh, I'll make the motion to set the public hearing. Thank you. Uh, Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? That motion carries. We'll set that public hearing for October 18th. I have one last item passing in for number five is the dem demolition of uh, structure at 7715 Maple Road. Uh, this is a structure that the, the uh, Bonesville School District has requested that we demolish. Um, we, we've already uh, got uh, our bid out and we will demolish this uh, building for the school and the school will repay us the cost of the demolition. Um, there's apparently a, just a lot of red tape for them to do it. It's uh, more expeditious for the town to affect that demolition. So I'm looking for a motion for that. And the school is purchasing the property, right? The school, to my knowledge, is going has already okay. purchased the property and they they own the property they already. They own it now. So we're just going to manage the demolition and be reimbursed by the school for the exact expenses. Correct. Okay. I'll make a motion to. Um, move forward with that demolition um, with it. reimbursement from the school district. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Can I blow it up? That motion carries. Um, I'd love Councilor and committee reports and comments. Howard. Uh, I have nothing at this time. Jenny? Uh, we had an Erie Channel committee meeting last Tuesday. It was uh, very informative. Uh, you know, in 2025, we're coming up on the bicentennial of the Erie Canal. And uh, we are looking at um, speaking to some good resources to be able to um, uh, 
uh, try and have some type of a event for the bicentennial of the Erie Canal. We are at the midpoint. Um, Van Buren is the midpoint of the Erie Canal, so it's uh, um, something that we want to be able to be um, able to promote and you know um, celebrate. You know, it's the middle. We're the middle, so we should be proud to be the middle. Um, I also have a Kentwoods meeting tomorrow morning, um, and Wendy's going to be there as well. Excellent. Mike. Nothing today, thank you. Nothing today. Ready? I uh, guess uh, we're going to skip Doug today. He has nothing to do. He has nothing. <laughs> <laughs> nothing pertinent. <laughs> On behalf of Doug, he has nothing to say. Uh, the parking area is up at the park. Got completed last week in record time. Uh, if you haven't been up there and taken a ride on the, that back road, it's like not supposed to, but it's pretty smooth. <laughs> we, we still have it closed off, but it's, I don't know if it's up to take a chance to go through there. It's, it turned out pretty nice. Yeah, thank you for facilitating that. That, that so was, under, was way in the budget, too. That's, that's the important part. I, under budget, that's my favorite yes. few words. <laughs> uh, this was easy, easy today, yeah, right? Nice. <laughs> yeah, you got the easy ones. <laughs> Lynn? Yeah, All right, uh, actually, I have no comments either today. So, uh, huh? seeing as there's no other business, I'm going to ask for a motion to adjourn until October 18th. I'll make that motion. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? You're right. That motion carries. We are adjourned. Thank you.